Rick is not okay. But before that, let me just say it's really good to be back. I'm really glad the show is back and that I have something to make a video for again. So the episode overall was mostly a predictable fanfare. Not a lot happened that any of us couldn't have seen coming. That said, that doesn't mean there was anything bad about it. It was actually a very enjoyable episode. As far as Woodbury is concerned, because that's going to be the quicker part of the show to discuss, I'm actually glad they had the sort of realistic event happen where everybody in Woodbury suddenly wanted to leave. They felt panic, and despite that the rational mind would have still said that Woodbury is probably safer than anywhere outside, because it had been attacked, they wanted to flee like cockroaches from light. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, for the governor's sake, he is a source of light, so to speak. I'm not trying to get strange on you. But uh, he is a source of power, and now that his bugs, his townspeople, want to scatter, he's just saying, let them. If they're, uh, if they're not going to be useful, then he doesn't need them. What, uh, what he needs is soldiers, people who will go to war, because that's all he can think about now. But my two favorite parts of Woodbury this episode were the first being Daryl taking his crossbow back. He just snatched it out of that guy's hands, and I don't even think that guy knew what happened. One minute it was in my hands, the next minute it wasn't. I don't know. That was, uh, that was a pretty cool trick. But the second best part of Woodbury was Andrea and her taking up a leadership role. Because while she was strong and confident and sort of telling the people how it is, like Shane would do, she was much more reserved, inspiring, and poignant, like Rick might be. She's sort of a, an amalgamation between the two of them, and perhaps the, what her, uh, that's what her role was growing into this whole time. All right, on to other things. I just don't know if I trust Merle. I mean, obviously I don't trust Merle. You're not supposed to trust Merle. What kind of crazy person would trust Merle? But I mean, I don't even know if I trust him as far as being earnest about his being kicked out of Woodbury. I still feel like that might be a subplot, that he's still technically working for the governor. He just has to go through a very roundabout way of getting back into Woodbury by convincing Daryl to join his side and learning about the prison and then eventually going there to kill everybody. And so forth. And speaking of Daryl, no, I don't think he's out of the show in any way. I'm sure he'll be back next week. Maybe they'll do uh, one episode where they don't show him at all, just like they, uh, they did with the Ricks group when they had Andrea and Michonne at Woodbury for the first time. But even if they do that, there's no way Daryl's out of the show. I firmly believe that Daryl and Carl will be in the show until the very last episode, if not even uh, to the last second. But man, what a great scene that was, their threat fest outside of Woodbury, where M Michonne and Glenn and Maggie want to kill Merle, but Daryl wants to protect Merle. Meanwhile, Rick wants to protect Daryl and Merle, sort of, at the same time, because he knows that Glenn and Michonne want to kill him, and... Oh, but he doesn't actually want to protect Merle. He hates Merle enough to probably also want to kill him, but he knows he can't because then it'll upset Daryl, and, well, it's a great dynamic, but we know what the result is. Daryl left. What's disappointing about that scene, in as much as it's disappointing about Glenn, is his drastic overreacting when I would ask him what would he do. I know it's not a normal scenario, so it's sort of hard to ask that question of someone at the time, but what would Glenn have had Rick do? He couldn't shoot Merle, he couldn't stop Daryl just from going, you know, just restrain him, that wouldn't have never worked. So there wasn't a whole lot of choice that Rick had, and Rick said as much, but it still was a little disappointing of Glenn to see him act that way. And then also a little disappointing of Glenn, but I think this is something they're going to work out, is he's now being too protective of Maggie, uh, she wasn't even actually raped, she was just threatened, and while I'm not discounting that as a terrible experience, and I think the governor should be killed just for that alone, Glenn is now treating her as if she's a little porcelain figure, and she just has to be carried around in his pocket, or the whole world's gonna end. And he needs to back off and let her be the, uh, self-managing adult that she is. 
None of that changes the fact, of course, that Glenn was fucking awesome as he stomped the walker 60 to 70 times, just grabbed it, pulled the truck, threw it down, and despite that Rick said that he got it, Glenn just went to town, smashing and smashing, getting his frustration out. That was, uh, that was pretty sick. Now for the prison, and oppositely who I'm actually proud of, is Carol. I'm not normally a big Carol fan, but this episode, she didn't overreact when she learned that Daryl was gone. She was a little upset at first, but she ended up basically smiling about it and being proud of Daryl for sticking to his code, to sticking to his convictions. And while I'm not saying that she knows Daryl's going to come back, because how could she know that kind of thing, I think she trusts that Daryl would make the right choice. Even if it seems wrong, it's the right choice for him at that time. And in a weird way, they, uh, she and Beth talked about uh, Ed, her dead husband, for a uh, short period. And if you think about it, Daryl is sort of the person that she has become or is trying to become. Sort of a strong, you know, self-reliant person. And at the same time, Merle, Daryl's brother, is a lot like Ed, which is a direct correlation she made. So I think the fact that she's more accepting of Daryl's choice is actually proof of her getting away from Ed's, uh, Ed's abuse and Ed's control, or the kind of control that people like Ed might have over her. And then really quick, um, the group, because I don't know their names yet, outside of Tyrese, I don't know any of their names, the group, the two guys, the father and son, suggesting they go take out Carol and Carl, good luck. Carl shot his mother in the head. I don't think they're actually going to be able to do anything. I, uh, I think Carl's bad enough, badass enough to take on just about anybody who goes against him. Something that has me concerned, however, and you guys let me know your take on this, because I might be just out of my mind here. Not Rick out of my mind, just normal out of my mind. But I remember Randall from Season 2 saying his group of people, the group that was uh, an unpleasant kind of group, had about 30 members. And Tyrese just got through saying in this episode that his group, their group, I should say, used to have 25 members. Now that's not the same number, but also seven months have passed. And now their group is down to four members anyway. But what if the group Randall used to belong to is the same group that Tyrese used to belong to? If that's the case, that would mean that uh, Tyrese and his three friends there are very unpleasant people, and they are not to be trusted at all. They're the kind of people that, uh, I don't want to repeat Randall's story, but did terrible things to a pair of daughters and made a father watch. And if that is the case, that's going to lead to some obvious problems down the road. As for Rick's problem, the way I'm looking at it is he's beginning to have a huge problem accepting anyone worthwhile into the group, because all the worthwhile people keep seeming to betray him. And this mostly falls to Shane. But you combine those experiences with the fact that he said something like he can't be responsible for them anymore. Tyrese's group, he can't be responsible. You know, there too much life, too much risks have already been taken, and they have to go because it's too much to protect anymore. As if he's might be losing his edge. Rick might be losing his willingness to lead. He'd, uh, he, he, can't take, he can't take it anymore. He wasn't able to keep Daryl around. He wasn't able to convince Shane to uh, not go to the dark side, as it were. He let Lori die. Uh, he let Glenn and Maggie be captured. And I don't think that he thinks he's trustworthy as a leader any longer. But then there's the two moments where Rick is out of his gourd. I really don't know what these moments are supposed to mean outside of Rick being crazy. He's uh, he's clearly not in his right mind, and it doesn't seem like he's going to be going back there anytime soon. I don't see what could possibly help him go from his current state to sanity again. But let's first talk about the baby. Now, it was strange, because it almost seemed as if the baby was rejecting Rick which I think is coincidental. I mean, the baby can't actually know or care. I mean, I guess they can. I know babies will cry if they are uncomfortable, you know, in someone's arms or whatever. But I think that was supposed to be coincidental. But because the baby was crying, I think Rick took it 
that the baby didn't love him because it wasn't his, which is probably his psychosis playing games with his own mind. But then at the end, the weird phantom angel of death lorry thing, I really don't know what to make of that. Uh, again, outside of the Rick is crazy thing, I don't know what to make of that at all. I don't understand the message it was trying to convey to Rick, or what message his mind was trying to convey to him, and I don't understand his strong reaction either. You would think that if he saw Lori, just like with the phone call, he would take it as a good sign. Like, maybe she's trying to tell him, or the she in his mind is trying to tell him that he needs to trust these people and take them in. She was sort of hinting about him protecting people in the phone call. But instead, Rick goes batshit, and he threatens a bunch of people to leave, but he's only talking to Lori, but everyone takes it as the uh, the new Tyrese group. And so they usher them out, and Rick is... I mean, no one knows what to do with him now, and I'm not even sure what to do with him. And I'm, I'm not even in the show.